what does it mean for us to be on mission? And that's the part that many of us confuse at times because I think that we're, we know that we're on a mission from God, but we're not really sure exactly what the mission is at times. And the worst thing that can happen is to not understand purpose and not understand mission as a whole. Imagine waking up every day and going to work every day and knowing you're supposed to work, but you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing. So you just kind of sit there all day. Maybe that's what you do at work right now. Imagine as a parent, you wake up and you know you're supposed to parent, but you're not sure what you're supposed to do. Am I supposed to feed them all three meals in a day? Like, do I just let them watch? Like, what does it mean to be a parent? The NFL season's starting soon. Imagine a team uh, has a quarterback and the quarterback knows he's supposed to be a quarterback, but he doesn't know if he's supposed to throw the ball or hand the ball off or take a knee. Uh, he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. It's what we've seen with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> now, I didn't do it in the first service. It was too easy, but I had to, I had to get it out. Um, imagine being on mission in the military, and you know you're going to your objective, but you're not sure what the mission, ex mission objective is, uh, if it's to capture someone or to neutralize someone or to gather intelligence or to destroy something. Imagine being on mission as a follower of Jesus, yet not knowing what the mission is. Knowing what the mission is is important and vital to joining God in his mission. And so Jesus would tell all of his disciples at one point, go. And what does it mean for us to be a church, to be a people that are going? And that commandment to go is not reserved just for clergy or pastors or church leaders. That commandment to go has been given to every single person that follows Jesus. That means that every single person that follows Jesus, all of us are on a mission and we have been sent by Jesus to accomplish that mission. And so to understand what it means to be on mission, we have to first understand the mission that Jesus was on and begins to fulfill in his life and then expects us to fulfill the same mission. Jesus would step on the scene in his ministry and he would read this prophetic scripture from the book of Isaiah. 700 years before Jesus was on the scene, Isaiah would write about this mission. And here's Jesus. He steps on the scene and he says, this is what God has called me to, to fulfill this specific mission. And he says this, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus begins to fulfill this prophetic mission, and in doing so, he's inaugurating the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. As Jesus steps on the scene, he says, this is what God has called me to do. The Spirit of God is upon me to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. There's themes that we find here, the poor, the prisoners, recovery of sight for, the, sight for those who are blind, those who are oppressed, the year of the Lord's favor. When he says the year of the Lord's favor, he's alluding to the jubilee year, the year of jubilee that God instated for his people in the Old Testament. And it was every 50 years the year of jubilee would come. And it means that you, there was this universal forgiveness of debt, of property, and of slavery. Everyone would become the same, equal, every 50 years. If you owed anything, it would be cleared. If you were a slave, you would be set free. Your property would be released. And the purpose of this year of Jubilee was to keep the rich from getting too rich and the poor from getting too poor. And Jesus says, I have come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I have come to bring peace to all of humanity. Jesus is saying, this is what it means for my kingdom to be on earth as it is in heaven. And so when we pray, God, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we are inviting God to allow us to be a part of God's story, to release humanity from some of its groanings or pains. Poverty, those who are in prison, spiritually and physically, sight for the poor, I mean, sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. We begin to see these themes all throughout Jesus' mission, those who are brokenhearted, those who are in bondage, those who are crushed. And Jesus' mission is tied to tangible compassion over these groups of people. It's called biblical justice, to right what is wrong. 
It's good news, and it's not just spiritual. It's physical, emotional, and social as well. And Jesus inaugurates the kingdom of God through this mission, through his life and through his ministry. And then he would tell his disciples, go. Go and do the same. Go and do the same. And so right here we have the exact description of what it means for you and I as followers of Jesus to be on mission. And you might be going, wait a minute, I thought being on mission was like going to church once in a while and then we get lunch after and then we can give money here and there and maybe serve. I'll definitely go to Easter and Christmas and all that. I thought that's what, what it meant to be a Christian in America. And at times we've made what it means to be a Christian or to be on mission here Very different from what it looks like in Scripture. There's a professor once, and he did this experiment. And he asked his students at the time, and this is before Bible softwares, and he asked his students to look through Scripture to find every verse that had to do with poverty or helping the poor or biblical justice. And so these students and the professor, they're going through Scripture verse by verse, and they found over 2,000 verses in the Bible that talked about poverty, helping the poor, or biblical justice. And then... This professor took one of his Bibles and he said, I'm going to cut out every single one of those 2,000 verses. So he begins to cut out scripture by scripture. Every single verse that had talked about poverty and biblical justice and how God commands his people to help those who are in poverty or those who are underprivileged or to right wrongs within the world. And he begins to rip out every verse, verse by verse, and he takes all 2,000 out, and he kind of has this raggedy Bible at the end of it. Some pages are completely ripped apart. Other pages are barely hanging on. The binding is barely hanging on. And he takes his Bible, and he shows his students, and he says this, this Bible that's missing all 2,000 of those verses, this is what has become the American Bible. And he said, we've taken the biblical mandate of being on mission to help those who are in need and to join God in his mission to help those who are in need. And we've removed it from our objectives, from what God has called us to do. And yes, we're supposed to do some other things in our lives. Yes, in America, we have more than other parts of the world. So yes, for us, it does mean at times we watch a little bit uh, less uh, of, uh, we're we're a little bit uh, less on Netflix, or we're watching less TV shows, or spending less time on our phones, or we're spending less money at Starbucks. Yes, all those things matter. But what it means to be on mission beyond those kind of superficial things that we've given ourselves to, so we've made it all about those things, there is a mission that God has called us to, and it is joining God in the renewal and restoration of the physical, emotional, spiritual, social needs of people all across the world. That's what it means to be on mission. And so over the next few weeks, as we do this sermon series, we're going to talk about what it means for all of us as a church community to be on mission. And today we'll talk about global missions. And next week we'll talk about our our beautiful city of San Antonio and how we can be on mission to help those in our city. And then on Labor Day weekend, we're going to have a huge bash, a party for our neighbors here, 78253, no strings attached. And we'll get to all that. But today I want to talk about what it means for us to be on mission to serve our friends, our brothers and sisters across the world. And uh, two and a half years ago, when we launched our church, uh, we decided that we would partner with an amazing organization called Food for the Hungry. And Food for the Hungry has been um, serving uh, underprivileged and communities in poverty all across the world for about 60 years. And they've been in Guatemala since the earthquake hit Guatemala about 60 years ago. And we said that we are um, so impressed by what this organization is doing and we want to partner with them to accomplish God's mission in Guatemala. And our goal was not to change the world. Our goal was to help a small community of about 1,600 people get on their own two feet. And if you haven't seen this community, here's a picture of the community. It's called Acamal Uno. And they are in the mountains of Guatemala near the rainforest regions up there. And This community here is a part of our church. Outer West Community Church is not just right here in this building in San Antonio. It's wherever you go as the church. But this community also is an extension of our church community. We are committed to their well-being. We are committed to helping them when it comes to their physical, emotional, spiritual, social needs by partnering with Food for the Hungry. 
And one of the biggest needs in Guatemala, and especially in Acamal Uno and, and smaller communities like Acamal Uno, is that the kids there are malnourished. Guatemala has the highest rate of child uh, malnourishment in Central America, and one of the top in the world. And uh, what happens is that these kids, because they're malnourished, their growth is stunted. And because they're malnourished, they're not able to learn the same way. And so their education sometimes is hindered. And because these communities are in poverty, it means that many kids after elementary school will drop out of school to begin to work at the age of eight or nine. In fact, when we were there, we saw young uh, children uh, doing physical labor on the streets there because they have to provide because they're in poverty. And Food for the Hungry is coming alongside of them to implement programs that will help them come out of poverty. I've been on mission trips in the past, uh, many mission trips, where we would go and we're going house to house or church to church and we're preaching at them. And yes, that has a place. But we preach and we leave and the community stays the same. And what I love about what Food for the Hungry is doing is they are getting involved at the physical, emotional, spiritual, social levels of this community. So for one example, because of child malnutrition, uh, what Food for the Hungry found out is, what, is that the people of Akamal just need to realize that they can grow crops and eat healthy food. And that might seem very basic for us, but they need to be educated on what that means. And so this, a lot of them have small properties. We went to a, uh, a house last year that had a bigger plot of land, and the whole property was completely empty. And we planted some seeds. You guys may remember it. And this trip, when we went back there, that entire property is like a forest. It's covered in corn and cabbage and cilantro and all sorts of fruits and vegetables. And what Food for the Hungry has done is they've taken children who were malnourished, and put them through this gardening program and track their weight and their nutrition and have seen countless uh, kids come out of malnutrition. And it might seem like a small thing, but now they can grow the way they were supposed to. They can learn the way they were supposed to. They might even go beyond elementary school now because of some of the education. They might go to high school for the first time or university for the first time. They might get out of systemic poverty for the first time in generations because of something small and simply because we're educating them. And you and I get to play a part in that. And there are so many other programs like that that they do in the community. And one of the ways that we can be a part of that is through child sponsorship programs. Now, Two and a half years ago when we launched this program, I was so proud of our church because we asked for 100 kids to be sponsored. And that Sunday, 100 kids were sponsored. And to this day, we have over 131 kids that are being sponsored in Akaba by our families here at Outer West. So thank you to all of our sponsors uh, that are sponsoring uh, one or even two kids. And what child sponsorship does is very simple uh, and it's brilliant because it's $38 a month to sponsor one child. And that money does not go uh, to beautiful kids like Adeline here. It does not go directly to their families. But that money goes to that community and only that community of 1,600 people. And it goes into the staff that are educating on the ground and the programs that are being implemented on the ground. So every single one of the people in the community benefits from your child sponsorship dollars. And not only that, you get to build a personal relationship with these kids that you sponsor. So we get to write letters to them, and they write letters back, and you get to build relationships with them. And not every organization does this, believe it or not. Uh, some organizations, you can sponsor a child, but you'll never get to go sit, sit with them or talk with them. Food for the Hungry, when we do our yearly or uh, uh, biannual mission trips, you actually get to go and sit down with their families and get to know them and meet them. We spend about 45 minutes with each child that we sponsor. And so it's an amazing opportunity to get involved in the lives of people, but also contribute to this community's flourishing and their wellness as a whole.